before we get started here, I just want to say a quick thing just from really just speaking on behalf of the Atlanta Falcons that, you know, we send our thoughts and our prayers with Lamar Hamlin and his family and the entire Bills organization. Um, we're praying for him. And when you see something like, something like that happen, obviously it puts a lot of things in about life and, perspe and into perspective. So just wanted to make sure that, you know, that Bills know and Damar and his family, most importantly, that we're, we're thinking about him and praying for him. How do you address that with your team? Well, it's, Michael, there's a lot of things that go on in life that we talk about, you know, behind closed doors privately. And just like a time things come up that you need to talk about that are about nothing, you know, may not be your normal football meeting, we, we talk about them. I guess I ask that because you've talked a lot this year about life situations, and this sure. is one that's a life and football situation. So I wasn't sure whether the conversation ends up being a little bit different because it's... Yeah, I just, Michael, I did, those are things that we talk about privately, and there's everything you, we acknowledge, things that go on inside the building, outside the building. Um, we, we'll always talk to them because we care about our players as people first. So those, those are things that... Things like this happen. Certainly, you, you'll talk about it. There's other things that we talk about too, but I'm not going to share our private conversations. Players can speak for themselves. How do you process it as a coach? Well, everybody, it's, it's as a person, Michael. So I don't, I can't speak for any other coach. I can only speak for myself. There's a lot of things you process when you you see something that that uh, you know out out in the open that what you want to call it traumatic. But everybody's got different ways they they. They deal with things, Mike, and so I've never thought there's some blueprint that this is what you have to do. Everybody has different emotions, and that's been my experience. I, I guess what I'm getting at is how how did you how did you as a person? Yeah, Mike, I just like like other things. I'm not gonna go into more details about my private thoughts or things I address privately with the team. That's just not who I am, and it doesn't make me any better or worse. This is how I deal with things. Did you get a sense of the state of, of the mind of the team or the emotional state of the, the team uh, during your conversations? Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, those are the questions. You, you, know, you guys have the open locker room that I think are better for everybody to speak for themselves. How tough was it to do that and given you know, what happened, the um, gravity of the situation? Well, you let them in. I think you've acknowledged life. I mean, there's more to more to life than football. And sometimes you, you know, you, it's hard. You know, you get so focused on your craft or your job that you you lose perspective. So when things happen, that it sh shouldn't take something like this to make you think about perspective. But um, certainly, those are things you acknowledge and we talk about all the time. So. Did you get any communication from the league this week about how to proceed or in terms of what? In terms of if everything was on a normal schedule or? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously you, you ask those questions to make sure that, you know, everything I've been told, playing Sunday at 1 o'clock. That's, that was our, and anything else that, you know, I'm not sitting there like there's things you're privy to, things you're not. But when it came to the, this week and, and planning and what, what the, the schedule is going to be. That's that's what you ask. But everything I've been told, playing one o'clock Sunday. Outside of your normal support services that are here all the time, did you add a layer to that, or will you add a layer to that? And every team has different ways. As you saw what the league put out yesterday, we have our own process. I mean, that, those are anything that they need is always available. Josh, do you know if the team will be doing anything to honor Hamlin and his family at the game Sunday? Look, I haven't. In terms of that, everybody can, again, they have different ways people want to honor, um, you know, and, that, and that's personal to some people. And, I mean, you can see the support from the league. That's uh, been pretty inspiring. So, but guys that they can honor in their own personal way and however they do it, that doesn't make anybody better or worse. Somebody very open about it. Some people are private. That's why I've never put a lot of thought into it. It's, it's nice when you see public gestures, but doesn't make that person any better than the person that maybe internalizes things and you don't know that person's history and things that have been in their life. So I don't judge off a social media post or somebody writes in their cleats, something on their cleats. 
I think it's great when people do it, but I also don't judge anybody that doesn't either. You said it's inspiring, I mean, to see the league, not just like fans, but teams and players and coaches come together over the past 48 hours. I mean, just from your perspective, what do you think that's meant to, I guess, the league at large to see that type of coming? It shows that people care. Uh, you know, it's a competitive business. We know that. Again, the longer sometimes you, you can lose perspective, but uh, these players, these coaches, the people that work in this league, they care. They do. And uh, so I think that's why it's inspiring. I think sometimes it gets lost in the day to day, you know, narratives or storytelling that about the league and about the, the game itself. So. Obviously, you do have a game on Sunday, but how yeah. difficult is it to focus on football right now? Well, look, I mean, it's there are a lot of things that happen outside, and you know, this one obviously very, very public and impacts a lot of people and impacts people's family, and uh, you know, but there's there's other things that can really impact you that you may never, never not even know what somebody's going through and. Uh, they may have something going on inside their life. There's a lot of things all the time that may happen that go on. And, you know, when you, you go back into your work mode, I mean, it's not lost on you about what's going on. But I think our guys understand, and then we'll go out there and practice today and, and try to get into a routine. But it doesn't mean that we lack empathy or, or don't, don't acknowledge, you know, anything else that's going on outside of, outside of this building. I know you have a you have a game left, but if mm -hmm. I can ask kind of a big picture question. Sure. What, what have you and Terry learned about building process these two years? And whether it's about the process or about the players you have here. Yeah, I think Jeff, it's been a very unique situation to say the least. You know, there's not one. I mean, you look at things in different models that I've brought up at different time, but it, no two situations are the same. You know, just different things that go on, and uh, it's certainly been unusual, I would think, from most people in the they get there and um, you do learn a lot what you know that first year as you transition you know, some of the hand you're dealt what you can really add what you can't uh, trying to change a climate culture you know that work is thrown out a lot that I think you you see that build and then I remember sitting here in the last year and Michael I think you've asked me and I said hey there's gonna be another lot of roster turnover it didn't mean that we had a lot of money to spend either. It was just the practical nature of it, just where we were. There certainly was. So this was a completely different team, too. So it was, it was like year one, it was a transition, but we were still better in certain spots. Guys that were on one-year deals and some rookies. And then this year, we, we, it was a lot younger team. And uh, as we made kind of the second transition. So I think you're seeing more of the foundation now, Jeff. Guys, after two years, and there will be a lot of things that open up that we haven't had in the off season, things that we got to strategically uh, plan ahead and which we have, and it'll certainly be different going on this year than, when, than any other off season we've had. But we feel the foundation strong, uh, the habits, uh, a lot of the young guys we've invested in, I think all that stuff's been positive. Yeah, people tend to look at just one loss record. Sure, you know, not only, but you know, which is part of it. And, and, and certainly, Jeff, you know, when you set expectations, and you put everything you got to try to go win a division, and the guys have, and there's multiple reasons. We came up short in a few games, and so the reality of our situation is now we got one game left, and we want to finish this right. And uh, but I'll never, you know, apologize or forever set expectations high. I mean that's our job, no different than what I've told you, We're trying to win, and we certainly have done that this year. And uh, obviously came up a few few short to keep playing. Um, you'll almost be able to breathe a little bit after the season. You'll have a lot more space, maybe kind of do some more things that you want to do, or should expectations <laughs> go up? I don't know. I mean, that's an interesting way to put it. I, you know, I think no matter what your situation is, and I always say you know what you signed up for and the expectations, but I, I do believe in our process, and I think we've tried to be consistent. We've adapted when you have to. I think that's important. And circumstances can change just like that. Things have happened. You guys that have covered this game a long time, and certainly the last two years, know there's some things that are in your control, some things out of your control, and are you able to adapt? You know, and I think we have. Uh, certainly, don't don't claim that we're perfect in any major amount, but uh, 
but pleased. Uh, breathe. I don't know, Jeff, but certainly I'm excited about it. You and Jerry were clear with with the owner, right, and vice versa, and Rich about this is going to take a while, right? Well, I think everything was pretty direct when we got hired and how we were going to go about it. And certain things I said we've had to pivot for different reasons, and which I think you should in any smart organization. Uh, but we have a vision, and we've gone about it the you know long hard way, and. Whatever obstacle we've tried, we try to take advantage of it. And uh, there's very good direct communication. If there wasn't, uh, you know, it, it'd be like a lot of things in this sports with a lot of drama and whatnot. But I, I'm thankful for the leadership team we have here and uh, to work with these guys. Yeah, you Coach, the, um, went back and looked at the Seattle rebuild. You mentioned those stuff sure. those two years. Uh, they go from Hasselbeck. Jackson and then get land with Russell, build out the defense. Um, are there some more parallels to, to be drawn to? Sure, San Francisco. What John did out there? There's a, there's a lot of things. I mean, it, again, when in your building, you're going through a transition, uh, you're trying to get the right, you know, whatever your schemes are, that's what makes this, this job go around. I mean, it's what makes this game interesting. There's a lot of different ways out of the schemes and, and styles, but if you can consistently and you can hit on the right the right people to bring in to play that style, and then you know sometimes it take, does take a little bit of luck. Maybe where your draft pick was, where you where you get to take somebody that somebody else didn't take in front of you, and that can help build too. But there was a foundation and a style, and it came through, and uh, you saw them take off. I mean, there's a lot of other examples as well. Yeah. San Francisco, you mentioned that one. Was yeah, same thing. I mean, as, as as Kyle, as they went through the transition in those first two years, and then. You saw then, and then their identities, and they added some other pieces. If you go back and look at that 19 draft, that that really helped as well. But they, they laid a good foundation. I mean, you can see it when you played them. When I was in Tennessee, we went out there right after they had made that late season trade with Jimmy Garoppolo, and we played them late in the year. You could see it. There was a style they played with. Um, so that was obvious. You had mentioned, you know, like I'd asked you, I guess, a year ago about the roster turnover. <laughs> You say you have more foundation now. Do you anticipate it being as, I don't want to say wholesale, but as as heavy of a roster turnover this year as you as you did? Yeah, it's kind of subjective, you know. When you're talking about heavy, I mean, there's a lot of things we feel good about. With some of our younger players, there's some other players that, uh, that we feel have earned, you know, another contract, and those are all the decisions. You know, that we'll, you'll continue to see as as the, as they get closer to the new league year when this season wraps up. But I don't know about heavy, but Certainly, it'll be it'll be different. It always is. It's a, I mean, I said it before. Like, whether you call it rebuild or uh, transition, whatever you want to, like, there's going to be turnover every year. It's just the nature of this business. Uh, in terms of just guys this week, is anybody coming back? Is anybody definitely not? Uh, you know, you won't see Elijah out there at practice today. Um, you know, Felipe is still going through the protocol. If we ramp him up a little bit today, see what it looks like as the week goes on. Um, no, I, I think, uh, you know, everybody else will be on the interview report, but you should see them all out there. Including you, right? Yeah, if, if you want to see them out there, I would tell you like Elijah, so. Hey, Coach, uh, game-wise, um, what are problems that uh, Evans and, and Godwin present? It looks like they're leaning on them last week in that Carolina game. Yeah, they've both been terrific players for, for a while down there in Tampa, and, and then the game on Sunday, they kept chipping away, and uh, – you know, he made some big plays, uh, Mike Evans especially, you know, made some good plays down the field one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, they were able to, to chip away and come up. You know, Carolina had control of that game for a while, and then Tampa made the plays in the fourth quarter, and they came out with a win. And uh, how big would it be for uh, Ritter to play? This would probably be the best defense he's seen get based on the uh, rankings and, and the Yeah, I mean, look, there's some pretty good, damn good defense we just played too. Yeah. So uh, I think New Orleans – Pretty, pretty damn good defense. Put Baltimore up there. You know, in Arizona, you know, those guys will bring it up front. They threw a lot of different things at them. And we'll have different challenges this week in a, another veteran group. And, and uh, yeah, it, it's, that's a fun part, D-Led. Every week's a challenge, and this will be a good one at home.